welcome to episode 60 of Stop and Give Me 20 podcast, 20 minutes with some of the world's top fitness professionals. I'm your host, Anthony Rana, and you can check out the show notes at continuefit.com. It's where I keep all my podcasts, as well as Strength Coach TV. I know I say it all the time. Please, if you can, go to iTunes and subscribe to the show. Ratings and reviews help out a lot. Honestly, I mean, trying to get the word out. And the more you do that, the more we get up on iTunes list. All right, for today's episode, I have my good buddy, Brianna Diario on. She is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, certified personal trainer, and a holistic lifestyle coach. She's enrolled in a PhD program at the University of Natural Health, pursuing her doctorate in holistic nutrition. She's the director of education and training at Vitamer Laboratories, a private label nutraceutical company, not pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, uh, based out of Irvine, California. She's had her own private practice for five years. I'm excited because she's going to be speaking at something I'm uh, helping put on the AMP Fall Seminar in uh, September in Long Island in Syosset, New York. So if you're in the New York area, check that out. You can email me for more information. Bree, thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yes, me too. All right, well, let's get right into this. What is your story? What's that spark? into your early, like the early spark into your fitness lifestyle? Yeah. What, so a lot of people don't know, actually, I originally went to school to be a Spanish teacher. So my undergrad was actually uh, in Spanish education and I got a job one summer being a personal trainer. Uh, Cause you know, I played sports my whole life and I loved working out. And so I, you know, was, I was a personal trainer and it was awesome. Uh, I worked at this gym called Mike Duffy's personal training in Oakhurst, New Jersey, uh, he's like one of my nutrition gurus. He's literally the reason I got into what I'm doing. I asked him uh, if he had any suggestions for a couple of books that I should read because, you know, the nerd in me loves to learn and read. And he had or if he had any practitioners that I should start following. And he told me about, you know, Dr. Mercola and um, some other people. And that just really sparked my interest. And the day after that conversation, I walked into my advisor's office um, at um, when I was an undergraduate. And I said, yeah, I don't want to be a teacher anymore. I'm not going to do my student teaching. And I want to go to graduate school uh, to get my master's in nutrition. And, and that's what I did. And then from there, it kind of uh, snowballed and, you know, became my whole life and world. Very cool. Now, I know you were an athlete, obviously, because I know you from the past. So you you were a golfer. You played some field hockey, right? Were you working out at all when you were playing at that age? Uh, yeah, my, my dad actually used to drag me to uh, a Jack LaLanne gym back in the day. Um, it was in it was it was in Bricktown, New Jersey. And I used to hate it at the time because it would be like I remember I was in eighth grade and he'd be like, all right, let's get up. We're going to go to the gym. He would time me on the track and then, you know, he'd make me do like lap pull downs and bicep curls and my wrists were always so weak and he wanted me to like warm up and I was just not having it. I would be dancing in the mirror and not taking it seriously. But it's really funny because, you know, now I love working out. And it was actually um, when my brother lived in California, he came back uh, for a Christmas break and he was really into the gym. And that kind of just made me get into the gym that much more because I just always copied him my whole life. Yeah, that's the one thing about having like an older brother or sister that you admire. You want to like be like them and do what they're doing. That's kind of cool. But I love that you weren't into it at first because you hear a lot of people hear the opposite. Like, yeah, my dad brought me and I just was like, I just loved it. And I started working out. But no, you're the opposite. Yeah, I hated it. I remember actually one time my dad woke me up on a Saturday morning and he was like, all right, we're going to go hit balls in the backyard um, and then we're going to go to the gym. And I had my eighth grade dance coming up and I was like, dad, I just got my nails done. Like, I don't want to do this right now. I was so mad at him and he didn't care. And he would just like make me go with him. But now I'm super grateful for it because it was, you know, it, it definitely piqued my interest. Absolutely. All right. Well, what about kind of growing up who I always ask this about, you know, who's your superhero growing up? But I you know, I want to know at the time who you felt, not now when you look back and say, yeah, my dad or my mom or whatever, or my brother, but like at the time, like who was that person like that really shaped who you are today? Honestly, it was my brother. I mean, I have been, I joke now and I, uh, there's actually pictures of me from when I'm young. Like I'm always looking, like literally looking up to my brother. Um, I just always was so obsessed with him because, you know, he was, always so aloof and, um, you know, always had this like very adventurous soul. And he kind of just always, you know, was very independent and did his own thing. And so I always would want to just hang out with him. Like I, I would say to him when we were kids, I'd be like, can I make you and your friends chicken nuggets? Like anything I could do to be around him, I thought was so cool. And literally whatever he did, like, you know, if he started playing baseball at 
seven, I was playing at five. Like I just, he started ski blading. So I started ski blading. Like I just copied everything that he did. And he was always just very um, secure in who he was as a person. Um, But without having to like be, you know, braggadocious about it or, um, you know, so I, I think that really instilled a lot in me from a young age. And he was also always super funny as well, which, um, you know, I think that's important to always have a sense of humor about, you know, most things in life. It's very cool. Very cool. Obviously. And like you said, you know, your dad brought you to the gym, you hated it. But as soon as your brother <laughs> came home, it was like, oh, now the gym's great. <laughs> totally. <laughs> what about now? Like who out there is doing some great things that you feel like is like your superhero that you're looking up that's changing the world? Yeah. So it's funny. Uh, Dr. Mark Hyman, I would say actually, and Dr. Mercola, like those are some of the the founders of functional medicine, I would say, um, at least in my field. And, you know, I remember I went to uh, Canyon Ranch when I was 18, which is kind of like a holistic wellness retreat. And my mom and dad went many moons before that. And Dr. Mark Hyman was um, a doctor there at the time. And so he's very popular now. But, but, you know, back in the day when he wrote some of his original books and the same thing with Dr. Mercola kind of calling out the health industry on, you know, some of these topics that people are, you know, more open to question their doctors about and kind of, you know, be their own health advocate. These people are out there kind of fighting the front line and making this information that's really technical and deep and, um, you know, the nitty gritty of it and making it accessible to people and also understandable. So, you know, empowering people to, you know, dig more and, you know, fight more for, you know, wanting to thrive with their health, not just survive. So I think that the, they're doing a really good job in, in my field for sure. I love it. I'm going to come back to that because I want to talk more about them and, and the holistic industry. Um, but uh, let's, let's first, what about who you're trying to be a superhero to? Cause I know, like I follow you on social media and you're somebody who is, I mean, it's, it's incredible how relentless you are just <laughs> with the information and you're, you're on there a lot. And it's a lot of it. It's not just the, you know, Oh, look at me in a bikini, obviously, but it's, you're giving a, a ton of information. Who are you trying to be a superhero to? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm, it's the nerd in me and I think it's, a, it's actually also partially because that's how I learn. And so selfishly, I love to put content out there because I save it for myself. That's how I started my blog. Like so many years ago, because I was in graduate school at the time and it was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do research, I might as well just do it and have it ready. Um, but I, I, this sounds so cliche, but I really just want to empower women. Like I, I think that a lot of women have this mindset that, you know, everybody's each other's competition. And I'm a very big proponent of like, there's enough room for all of us, like be great at what you're great at. And, you know, like everybody can bring something to the table. So I just want women to feel like, you know, they can be, especially, you know, the health industry, I think is a very male dominated industry. And I think, um, to not have to lead with like, you know, being sexy or pushing protein powders on people and those kinds of things and actually being credible and intelligent and being able to have a career and letting women know that they can do that and have a voice. Um, that's something I'm very passionate about and like women helping women and empowering each other. I think that that, you know, we need more of that, more girl power. Absolutely. I agree 100%. I think we've had a lot of women on here. Krista Duran, Molly Galbraith. Uh, we just had three amazing women, all from Canada, which was just by accident. But uh, Maria Mountain and Rhonda Cat and, and Carmen Bott, all great coaches that are really showing, you know, that, uh, that yeah, I mean, you know, it's a male-dominated industry, but they're breaking a lot of barriers. So very cool. I love that. Um, I, w- I want to get back to this holistic uh, industry idea, because like you said, um, you know, Mercola and Hyman, I mean, they've been, they've, they've had to really fight through a lot of this stigma of like, let's just say the word quack, right. I'll, right. I'll, right? Uh, because, and, and I think it's come a long way. Like people are starting to listen. People are starting to question, you know, the health industry. Talk to us about where we are and, and how, you know, what, what you would like to see people do to kind of understand about this industry? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's actually kind of becoming almost a double-edged sword because it's, we have Dr. Google now as well. So people at the same time think that they can just research something or they do one fitness show or they do, you know, they have their own health issues and they overcome that. And then they think that they're a quote health coach. And that's actually very dangerous because at the end of the day, health and nutrition, like it's a science and there's a lot of biochemistry that goes on and there's a lot of factors. And, you know, so there definitely needs to, I think, be 
a level of empowering people to, you know, question what their doctors are saying to them and being your own health advocate, but also making sure that you're using the right information and you're not just being super uh, biased with, you know, um, cherry picking data and, and things like that and being these zealots. People are, you know, like I, I call the, the like nutrition zealots where they live or die by one lifestyle and they think that that's it forever and anything else is just, they don't want to hear it. So I think it's very important to find practitioners that are objective and scientific based, but also, um, you know, they don't have ulterior motives because they're sponsored by a certain company or whatever it is. So I think it's a combination of collecting the information that you can, finding practitioners that you like and you feel that jive with your style and your health goals, but also making it actually adaptable and relatable to your lifestyle, not making everything, you know, a religion where you have to live or die by it. Yeah. And I think you do a great job with like even things like uh, things, stuff because this is a family show stuff you can shove into your, uh, your blender <laughs> type things, like a lot of, yeah. a lot of fun to kind of show, like you're not just, because I know you're probably, do you think you're showing and you are a nerd, but you're showing, <laughs> you know, a lot of the science and research. Are you trying to kind of basically not compensate for what it is, but to say, are you, are you doing a little bit more of that also to kind of say, listen, like this is all backed by science. Are you kind of pushing that envelope a little bit more because of the stigma it's had? I think it's partially the bat, but it's also, I think, who I am as a person. Uh, my mom used to call me the question grape growing up. I always want to know the why and like get to the root cause, which makes sense also for the field that I'm in, you know, being a holistic nutritionist and the functional medicine side of things. That's kind of like what we preach. So like I love when people will make these grand statements saying like X, Y, Z stops inflammation. And I'm like, OK, that's great. But how? But why? So I, you know, the mechanism of action and those kinds of things. Uh, for me, again, selfishly, I want to know the why. And I think other people should know the why too, because if it can, you know, make some clinical correlations or connect some dots for people, I think when people have that aha moment with their health and they understand the why, people have a lot more longevity and success of when they're on a certain health protocol or plan. Absolutely. Can you explain for everybody out there too, like what exactly is holistic nutrition? Yeah. So holistic nutrition is sort of this, you know, whole body approach, right? Because our body is a system. We don't, it's just kind of like when you're working out, you know, if you have a part of your body where you're like, oh, I don't like my stomach and I'm going to just train that. You can't always just, you know, spot train things. So the same thing with health where we have, everything has become very specialized. You know, you have a headache, you go see a brain doctor, you, you know, have a, a leg issue, you go see, you know, an orthopedic surgeon. Um, but realistically, the body functions and dysfunctions together. And so what holistic medicine does is it really takes a, a step back and looks at the whole person and it looks at how these systems, uh, you know, function and dysfunction together and kind of what is the root cause of these problems? What are some of the core imbalances that we're having um, and what caused that to happen in the first place? So it's really, like I said, and also assessing things that's much deeper than just, you know, your diet and nutrition, um, but also what's going on, you know, with your mind and your body and, your sleeping habits and your detoxification pathways and your stress levels and your support system and all these other factors that play into what actually makes health health. Because, you know, just because you don't, you know, you don't have a, a sickness doesn't mean that you're healthy. And so it's also about, you know, making sure that the quality of your life uh, is good as well. Absolutely. Good stuff. Where do you think, uh, you know, what, what do you still need to do? What does your, the industry, this holistic lifestyle, you know, nutrition, how far does it still have to go to really get people to start really uh, looking at this with an even uh, deeper microscope? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that that is, uh, it comes down a lot to what's going on still with, uh, some of the bigger organizations like the FDA and people who are supposed to be overseeing and regulating what's actually, you know, allowed in our, in our food system and some of the marketing puffery that goes behind certain terms that aren't, you know, either regulated or, um, you know, just the quality of what's going on with, you know, even the food that we eat and these kinds of things. So I think it starts from the top, you know, the fish stinks at the head kind of thing. So some of these bigger organizations that are sort of pushing, um, you know, this, this, you know, Western philosophy of health where it's symptom problem, we have to fix it and that's it. Um, and not really letting people have the option to say, okay, yeah, that's a great diagnosis, but I want to try some other routes. Like, can I do that? You know, right now that that's not really an option for a lot of people. They get who they get, you know, as their doctor or who's in their network or whatever it is. And, and they can't really, you know, dig any deeper. And that that's sad. Yeah, it's so true. So true.
All right. Well, now it's time for the Marigold Bar Stop and Give Me Five segment. Five rapid fire questions and answers brought to you by Marigold Bars, grass fed protein, gluten free, organic ingredients, non GMO, and no preservatives. You have to keep them in the fridge because there's no preservatives. And they taste amazing. I have them every single day. You can check them out at marigoldbars.com. All right, Bree, you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, anybody that follows you on Instagram knows. You are the taco queen, and you, you're, you've been known to have more than a margarita or two at a time. So you can have two tacos in one margarita, or two margaritas in one taco, with any public figure from the past, uh, living or dead. Uh, who would it be, and what would you ask them? That's a great question. I ask questions like this to people all the time. I don't think it's very telling of them. So it, um, I, I would say probably I'm really obsessed with uh, Jim Carrey and like Will Smith. I would say those are like two people because they're very into this whole like hippy dippy mindset of like the universe and but they're also funny and they're very successful in their careers and they have this relentless uh, pursuit of, you know, trying to be the best version of themselves. So I think I would probably have to pick um, Will Smith because he just like keeps it real. And he talks a lot about, uh, you know, just like the power of positivity and your mindset. So I'd probably also ask him what some of the best advice he has ever gotten, because that's a question I ask people all the time. Like, or if you could give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? So I would think I'd want to know, you know, maybe some things and some gems of wisdom that he had along the way that kind of helped him get to the level of where he is now. Very cool. Yeah. You, and if it was uh, Jim Carrey, you might need three margaritas uh, where he's yeah, at right definitely. now. All right. You are on the West Coast right now, but you are a Jersey girl. So you know? I want to know. I know you love Jersey. So first food or place or restaurant uh, you go to when you come back home in Jersey. Oh man, the West Coast, I love it for so many reasons, uh, but they just can't get Italian food right on any level. It's very sad. They actually just opened up in Italy here in LA, so I'm gonna try and go to that soon. But um, I always go to this restaurant in Tom's River, New Jersey called Villa Amafe. It has a lot of uh, sentimental um, memories in my heart. We went there for pretty much every like graduation and baseball party back in the day, but they their Italian food, it's like true Italian. It's not like super thick and heavy. It's very light, uh, like more Southern Italy. Uh, so I would definitely go there and get some chicken parm and some meatballs and broccoli raw because I miss that stuff when I'm gone for sure. Nice. All right, Desert Island, Holistic Health Summit. You can fly one coach in to learn from who is it? Oh, that's that first of all, sounds like a dream to me. Um, <laughs> I would probably have to say uh, Dr. Michael Ruscio. So he is, uh, he's somebody who's kind of up and coming in the industry. I mean, he's, he's definitely gained a lot of popularity over the past couple of months, but he's one of those practitioners who he practices functional medicine. He specializes in gut health, which is, you know, definitely one of my favorite topics, but he is also very objective and he's very science-based and he's like, listen, these are the facts. This is the data. This is the research. Um, and he has a very good way of making actual protocols that people can follow and make realistic changes in their lives. So I would want to just pick his brain about all things gut health. Very cool. Uh, book workshop or seminar that was instrumental in changing your life. Probably um, the holistic lifestyle coaching certification that I got when I was in graduate school from the Czech Institute. That was very important for me because when I went into that, you know, I was in grad school at the time for nutrition. So I thought nutrition was the only thing that mattered and that was it. And if you're nutrition and, you know, also having a personal training background, I thought that was it, just nutrition and diet. And Paul Czech you know, has always been a very big advocate of talking about, no, there's a lot of other things, you know, there is rest and there is stress and there is, you know, um, toxins and, you know, taking time to do less and all these things. So it really opened my eyes to understanding that, again, the body is a system and anything can kind of affect everything and you can't just micromanage just diet or just, you know, working out. Yeah. An excellent example, Paul Check, of somebody who is saying a lot of stuff back in the day and now like you see how much how many people are talking about rest and stress and totally and toxins. <laughs> so yeah um Bree, if you could be in any movie what would it be oh that's a great question because i have like so many different vibes i'm obsessed with mob movies so i mean i would say um you know if i'm going for like a mobster kind of vibe it would be something like goodfellas i think um but i'm also a like a, a hopeless romantic I'm a girl kind of thing so I would say something maybe like uh, La La Land was actually a really good movie so you know and uh, 
you know, it's based in California. So I think maybe those would be like my two. There you go. So it tells a lot. I mean, obviously you got your Jersey side and your California <laughs> side. Totally. Yeah, that actually sums it up perfectly. Yeah. And I can't, I can't go by like switching the channels. If I see Goodfellas or Godfather, it oh. has to stop. It drives my, my, my wife crazy. So good. <laughs> All right. Wait, we got to do a quick bonus round. This is going to be lightning quick because um, we're both coffee lovers. So let's go. Coffee, French press, Chemex, drip, or Keurig? Oh, actually, none of the above. I make my coffee in one of the espresso uh, things on like your on your stovetop. So espresso coffee is actually what is my go to. All right. Nice. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Black or with creamers? Oh, black. One hundred percent. Yeah, I've, I'm a black history uh, always. But then Laird Hamilton came out with that his creamer and I kind of love are it. Those really good, though. Those are actually I actually met them at uh, Expo West two years ago and they were super cool dudes. So I, I just like that product in general for what they yeah. represent. So yeah. Me yeah. Too. Uh, now, do you buy your coffee whole bean or ground? Whole bean. You got to grind it yourself. That's what keeps those antioxidants nice and prime. Come on, people. Don't buy Come ground on, coffee. Come on, people. Rookie mistake. Come on. <laughs> light, light, medium, or dark roast? Ooh, uh, I'm going to say dark roast. Um, dark roast tends to have actually a little bit uh, higher antioxidant count as well. Um, so generally, I'm a dark roast kind of gal. Okay. Okay. Uh, I am. I'm drinking hot coffee right now. It's like 100 degrees in my in my little studio here. Uh, are you hot or iced coffee? I, it's so funny. I love thing. I actually have a secret talent where I can drink steaming hot beverages. Like you could have just poured the coffee and I can drink it. No problem. And my mom always knows when I come home to visit because I will have half drank cups of coffee all over the house. Cause I just love the first few sips when it's steaming hot. And then I'm like <laughs> over it. Nice. All right. What's a project that you're working on that's getting you excited? This AM seminar in September, I was actually just working on some research the other day and working on my PowerPoint. So I am so excited. I love being around people who make me feel like, wow, I really need to step my game up and do more research and be smarter. So I just, I can't wait to see everybody and to hear all the speakers. So I'm super stoked for that. Yeah, we are excited to have you too. Cool. All right. What is that letter to your younger self? What advice are you going to give young Brie? Oh man, uh, this is a question I ask people all the time. So I'm always like listening to what other people say. I think as I've gotten older, I realized that, um, you know, time and energy are the two most valuable commodities that you can have in your life. And you, you pay for everything with time and energy. And those are two things that you can't create more of. So, you know, the same way that you budget out money, um, you have to learn to budget out your time and your energy and, you know, stop saying yes to things that you know you really don't want to do or being around people that you know don't serve your highest good and and not feeling bad about it. You know, I think a lot of people try and make you feel bad when you're secure in your beliefs about things and they're not. And so, you know, realizing that you have to allocate um, energy and time that you can't always get back and you can't create more of that. So, you know, and, and setting boundaries, energetic boundaries with yourself and with people um, and understanding you need time for that so you can actually be, um, you know, a better version of yourself. Love it. Love it. And um, just love what you're doing. It's been great for me. It's been such an honor to see you from an intern and you were interning uh, in the same building as uh, me. That's where we met when you were at the, the gym. And um, just to see how far you've come and how you push yourself. Um, I love it. And uh, I want you to just make sure you keep doing what you're doing. So Bree, thanks for coming on and doing this. Thank you so much for having me. I am just, I'm so excited and grateful for this experience. And then I can't wait to see you in September. All right. Well, that's going to do it for episode 60 of the Stopping Gimme 20 podcast. Thanks again to Brianna Diorio. Make sure to check out all the links to all her stuff at continuefit.com. Make sure you uh, follow her on Instagram. A lot of great stuff. Thanks to Marigold Bars, high quality protein with all the premium ingredients. Check them out at marigoldbars.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. Leave us a review and a rating. It helps us out. My name is Anthony Renna. Thank you so much for stopping by.